Hi guys, and welcome to Roofless in Colloquium, another week of uh, tutorials and lessons. And we're so excited that um, you are joining us or watching us uh, if you just registered on our website. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about yellow, yellow paint. We used yellow this past Friday on our uh, webinar uh, where we painted the container, the yellow, the plastic yellow container. We used yellow when we did the study at the site uh, this weekend. And uh, so as promised, uh, we went to the store, we got uh, some more extra yellow, and we also got to talk with someone at the store. We went to Blake on Beverly. And um, there are a couple of employees there. I mean, they're artists and they're amazing. And they have been there for a very long time. And, and we have established good friendships with them. One of them, her name is Sandra. And if you go to Blake on Beverly and Sandra is there, uh, just uh, tell her hello and that you are part of Ruthless Painters because she knows about us and she's amazing. She has a great knowledge. So. Um, I just stood in front of the, the oil painting wall and then kind of like reading all the colors and I have a little bit of an idea, but she happened to be there and she gave me a, invaluable information. So I'm going to switch. Um, hi, Jen. How are you? Uh, Blake Beverly uh, on Beverly. And let's do this. We got let's do it. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven freaking yellows, okay? I'm gonna start with the uh, three cadmiums right here. We got, we, we're gonna categorize them by uh, heavy metal. And then we brought alternatives. We wanna talk about toxicity. We wanna talk about uh, transparency of why yellow is such a uh, particular color to work with. But these are the three cadmium yellows from Gamblin. Cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, Cadmium, cadmium yellow deep. The difference between the three of them, it's the temperature, the warmth. Uh, we talked during the webinar that um, it's better to have something without warm and warm it up than to have a yellow that's in between. We mentioned that uh, when I had no idea, when we had no, no idea about yellows and we were in front of that shelf, we just picked this one because we thought, okay, well, this medium Goldilocks style, not too cold, not too warm, so that's gonna be it. And now we learn and we realize that it's better to have a light um, yellow and you can always change it to warmer. It's not gonna be the same, but it's if you have to choose between those three, choose the lighter. There's a cadmium lemon yellow that it's gorgeous. There's a cadmium chartreuse that's gorgeous, but we just uh, limited our budget <laughs> and we got like a two and a half of sorts. So uh, this one right here, uh, it's a new color that we got and we are excited about this, but uh, we're gonna explain exactly why the pros and the cons. Hansa yellow light, Hansa, Hansa yellow, it's a very uh, popular color, I would say among the purists. And uh, some people rave about this color. I hate, I, I, uh, we listen to painters saying that they're, it's their favorite yellow. And um, we're gonna explain exactly how this works. They have Hansa yellow light, Hansa yellow medium, Hansa yellow deep. So same range, but it's not cadmium base. So then we just uh, changed the, um, the, the part of the aisle and we got um, the cadmium free Utrecht. So there's this uh, brand, uh, Blake owns this brand, by the way, it's cheaper than Gamblin. And uh, they were the first ones who created a cadmium free um, yellow cadmium series. So we put um, Utrecht cadmium free lemon yellow. So this it's similar to the cadmium yellow light, but it should be a little bit lighter. Then we brought uh, Naples yellow right here. So this is uh, yellow that it's cadmium free. Yes, it's cadmium free. It has titanium base and uh, yeah, it has an oxide. So uh, this is not toxic. This is not toxic. The Hansa yellow is not toxic. 
So um, talking with Sandra, she told us that a lot of people that are concerned with cadmium, which is a toxic metal, they choose Hansa yellow instead, or they go to the Utrecht brand and they use cadmium free yellow. So, um, so yeah, this one is Naples yellow. And then we, we just uh, went to the potato shelf of yellows, I guess, of, or, or oil. So there's this uh, brand, Williamsburg, uh, it's made in US also from Brooklyn and uh, from Brooklyn, right? Yes. And it's handmade, it's very expensive, high pigmentation. Uh, we don't own any Williamsburg in our set because they're very expensive. But she just pointed, Sandra said, you know what? I like this color a lot. It's called Bismuth Vanadase yellow let me see uh, i i'm not going to put it in the chat but uh because uh when we record this it's not going to be uh available but anyhow bismuth it's a material an organic material the the bismuth stone is gorgeous and um i wonder it, it's the bismuth stone is uh the product that they um they take when they when they make uh Peptobismol. So uh, there's bismuth in that pink syrup that comes from that rock. I didn't know that uh, the rock is gorgeous. It's just like uh, it has a lot of colors and it's beautiful. I didn't know there was a bismuth that, uh, or maybe there's a bismuth that is yellow, or maybe they just get the yellow pigment out of the bismuth. That we don't know. But yeah, bismuth vanadase yellow. This was $33 and it was a tube that it was 37 um, milliliters or 1.2 ounces. So we did not purchase this color. Uh, we almost did because we thought it's expensive and it's uh, behind um, glass, so it must be good. We're so happy we didn't get it because this doesn't look like that spectacular to be honest with you. All right, we have the three uh, primary neutrals, titanium white, um, Portland gray medium, chromatic black, that's it. I think we're gonna make the switch this week. Chromatic black is gonna be our black because it's so good. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do uh, really quickly is um, uh, play with the transparency because I want you to, uh, um, we wanna show you um, how the cadmium is the ingredient in the color that makes the color opaque. It's the cadmium. So, and this one was Utrecht cadmium free. And actually this one has bismuth also. So we got one for eight bucks, which has bismuth. And then uh, this one has, uh, was 33 bucks. So yeah, definitely not. So you can see already that um, this Hansa yellow light and this, um, uh, tight, um, little, 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 uh, cadmium yellow light, there's much more uh, opacity with this yellow. What's the problem with um, yellow? Yellow is a very pale color. It's the most difficult color to paint with. Why? Because when you apply it on a, on a surface that uh, is wet, it, it very quickly it picks up some of the pigment underneath and then it, it kind of like churns that yellow into something else. It's very, very easy to make yellow paint uh, look like green just because there's paint or pigment underneath. But if you have cadmium in it, the opacity is much stronger. And then you can make really, really solid opaque yellows on top of any surface. It's easier. Hansa yellow, not toxic, non toxic, cadmium free, but it has more transparency. So that's the advantage and the disadvantage. Luckily, there is this Utrecht uh, brand and I don't know how long uh, because uh, gambling already changed the uh, tubes and uh, this has been with us for a very long time. But I can tell you um, that when we finish this yellow, uh, we're just gonna phase out the cadmium slowly. Um, talking with Sandra, she has so much knowledge at Blake on Beverly that um, we thought it would be a good idea 
to phase out any colors that may contain a label that says warning, this causes cancer. And cadmiums are one of those. So anyhow, we take care, we use gloves, gloves sometimes, but I feel like it would be a good idea to make an effort to go towards the least toxic um, option. So um, there you have it. All right, I'm just gonna bring a uh, white and I'm gonna do a little, oh, maybe I should do the cadmium yellow transparency on the cadmium yellow medium, transparency on the cadmium yellow deep. This is a gorgeous color. This is the color of the new era of yellows, turmeric, uh, I don't know how many names, but uh, we saw this article and everyone all of a sudden is thinking of this color right here. Uh, and light yellow ochre, uh, transparency on Naples yellow, which has titanium white. So this is a also very opaque color. Great for flesh tones, for example. And uh, the transparency on this bismuth vanadase yellow. So yeah, it's not, it doesn't really makes us uh, gasp if you ask me. I'm gonna bring some titanium white and let's do a tint with a cadmium yellow um, medium. I'm gonna do a tint with a cadmium yellow deep. And you'll notice that uh, there's a difference of intensity of um, temperature. So um, yeah, this is a very, th there's a reason why we chose this. We still feel like this is a pretty good color, but when we finished uh, that tube, we went immediately to cadmium yellow light. It's the yellow that we tend to put first, but as we noticed when we did the studies, it's not the only yellow. We used a lot of these other uh, cadmiums and they work really well. So I'm gonna do a tint with the Hansa yellow light. And the reason why I wanna do this because we wanna put it to a test. Can the Hansa yellow tint have a similar opacity as the cadmium yellow? Will it work as an alternative to the cadmium yellow? Because that's one of the reasons why people use it. One of the main reasons, because it's cadmium free. So, um, and I think, um, you know, there's obviously there's more intensity with a cadmium yellow, but there's no reason why this shouldn't be a good alternative. Um, so comparison between these two, the cadmium yellow light and the Hansa yellow light without any tints, there is more transparency here. This is a very challenging color to paint with. I can tell you right now, this transparency doesn't bode very well when you apply this color over a surface that has already color. It's just gonna create a tarnished um, green effect. So bringing some white can improve that. We can get that close to cadmium yellow. So it could be a good alternative. Um, but we feel like after doing this, the best possible alternative, and I think we had this color before, right, Jen? I think we had the, the Utrecht yellows before. Yeah, I think we have. Did we run out of them? I think they might be in our emergency kit. <laughs> we kind of check it out. Loyal. We went brand loyal with Gamblin. <laughs> I'm going to check it out because I know that Gamblin has a statement on the website saying that uh, the toxicity is very relative or something like that. Um, I don't know. Um, I know that we had them. We bought a couple or maybe the three. The cadmiums are orange, yellow, and red. Those are the most popular. So um, I think, to anyhow, you track uh, tint, amazing. It has great um, pigmentation and it has great coverage. So, um, and this is, by the way, not even uh, uh, yellow uh, light, it's lemon yellow. So it's, it's supposed to be a little bit lighter than this one, pigmentation wise. Um, so this is a winner in price. It's a winner in less toxicity or no toxicity because there's no warning label on this one. Because when the tubes changed, they started to put more uh, uh, visible uh, and additional warning labels. I think this one right here has a, a single warning label, uh, but then I checked the new tubes and they have uh, three instead of one. 
So um, anyhow, so yeah, price, coverage, no toxicity. This is uh, the way to go. You track, um, yes. If you prefer to stay with, within the same gambling, uh, we would kind of like have to jump to the Hansa yellow series, uh, but just be aware that the transparency may be an issue. You'll have to make tints. I'm gonna do a quick, um, oh, uh, yeah, let me just do a, a tint with uh, uh, Naples yellow. Great for uh, highlights on flesh tones. And I'm gonna do a tint. I don't even know why I'm doing a tint with the bismuth because it's pretty light. Uh, another thing that I noticed when Sandra was explaining um, the colors is that she had a much more appreciation with single pigment paint. Paint that um, has a single source of pigment rather than pigment that it's blended by two or three or more than one uh, pigment. So it seems like she put an emphasis on single pigmentation as a core or a principal paint to have rather than just uh, use additional or, or uh, acquire other pigments that combine uh, uh, plus one uh, pigments to create a new color. So um, I'm gonna do, I have time, I have, yeah, we have 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna do um, a quick tone with gray. And this is actually very good because with the, with the tone, you'll see more or less what happens when the color gets picked up, uh, when, when the yellow pigment, how it reacts with other colors. And this is good because it's neutral, but this is green. You can make green with yellow and gray, not necessarily blue, contemplate this option because it makes beautiful uh, desaturated greens, uh, yellow and gray, how about that? So this possibly would be the, the alchemy lesson uh, or demonstration of the day. Uh, cadmium, this is a gorgeous color too. This is beautiful actually. And again, the opacity, there's opacity here. There's titanium, I believe on this gray. So naturally the opacity is highly, highly appreciated when you paint with yellow. Um, and then I'm just gonna do a tone with the cadmium yellow deep. So these two colors are absolutely gorgeous if you ask me. Uh, this one has more of a look of uh, making a mistake. <laughs> I shouldn't say the word mistake. Uh, just putting yellow on top of something and not knowing exactly what's going to happen. But still, it, this could be a great yellow for highlights of uh, botanical elements. And I'm already getting like some yellow on my skin. And, and after the conversation with Sandra, I'm kind of like, I'm not freaking out, but I think um, we're going to start moving the yellows, um, the cadmiums. Uh, yeah, we shouldn't be concerned at all, unless you have a condition, obviously, then it would be different, but um, Hansa yellow with gray, uh, making a tone. This is because of the transparency of the Hansa. It makes a beautiful, beautiful color. Look at, look what happens with the yellows when you mix them with neutrals, with what we call primary neutrals. It creates a range of colors that is totally different and very rich and very interesting. These are more applicable to uh, painting than the raw material, obviously. So really quickly, I'm just gonna do um, uh, tone with um, the Utrecht cadmium free. They're also very beautiful. Maybe even uh, works a little bit better than uh, cadmium yellow. So another plus, this is gaining a lot of, um, good marks uh, in our book. So another yellow that's a little bit um, warmer, it's more like salmon mixed with, um, this is the Naples yellow, beautiful color as well. This is also a fantastic color for, this makes like almost like skin tone, light skin tone or highlights. Naples yellow and gray. Uh, sometimes uh, when we make like flesh tones, we kind of like start putting a bunch of, um, a bunch of pigments and um, it's good to um, do a study and see that um, with a very limited amount of colors, you can create a lot of things. Bismuth, I think that's the pronunciation, with gray. I don't know. I feel like this, uh, yeah, no, it's not worth 33 bucks if you ask us. Um, unless, unless you want to say that you have bismuth vanadase yellow and then sounds super um, fancy. 
uh, I don't think it's worth the price. And finally, we're going to do a shade with a chromatic black. Let me see if we can get this right. Uh, light color first, a tiny bit of the This is why the chromatic black is such a great black, because um, it doesn't overpower the mixture uh, immediately. I was able to make this color without uh, risking too much, because a uh, chromatic black is very transparent. So because of that transparency, it's safer when you mix it with other colors and it doesn't reduce the pigmentation. This is a perfect example why chromatic black is such a great black to have. Um, so uh, talk about chartreuse green. You can make green with yellow and black. You know, we have experiences before, even when we were outside uh, on Sunday, we talked about it and how you can make green with uh, yellow and black. I'm gonna do a tint with um, cadmium yellow uh, medium and a tiny bit of the chromatic black and boom, you get also a very, uh, I don't know what color this would be. I, we didn't do the experiment with um, the color cards, but I'm gonna do it with uh, cadmium yellow deep and chromatic black and uh, we can have a comparison. This is a beautiful color as well. The most chromatic um, or the higher pigmentation, I would say, is obviously uh, the medium uh, yellow. Uh, so three uh, fantastic shades. You can paint trees with this. Uh, there is a beautiful painting of an artist who painted a lemon tree and she used uh, different sh shades of yellow and she only used yellows and uh, chromatic black. And the painting is absolutely stunning. And she painted the lemons and the leaves and the grass underneath. And um, there's no sky on the composition. It's stunning. So um, Hansa yellow and chromatic black. Let's do this. There's a little bit of uh, paint, but that's OK a little bit of chromatic black. Again, a super safe, very good black to have because it creates shades without sacrificing uh, color too much. Uh, if we were to use a different kind of black, this would be a disaster probably. I don't know. Uh, we would have to use a very small amount. Uh, what did we do earlier? Um, Hansa yellow could be a good substitute for chromatic, I mean, cadmium yellow light uh, in a non-toxic format. I feel like these two comparatively, uh, maybe this one may have a little bit more of a warmer temperature than this one. This feels like a higher pigmentation. There's a lot of like uh, desaturated notes here. Maybe it's the amount of chromatic black, but I don't know, this could be a good non-toxic substitute to um, cadmium yellow. And the last three, good timing. So always mix the light color first. Um, when you mix something light with something dark, always the lighter first. And then some chromatic black, a wonderful black to make shades. And that's the color that we get, this beautiful green. Uh, there's a little bit of reflection, a little bit of a re reflection. So I think the shade is not as strong um, as the shade uh, that we created with the cadmium base and chromatic black. So maybe the shades with the uh, cadmium free yellow may not be as lustrous and pigmented. Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's it. That's possibly it's a little bit weaker when it comes down to shades compared to this ones. Hmm. Good to explore and isolate mixtures. So I'm gonna put more chromatic black and see if it's just a shade. No, it's not as the, I could see there's more luminosity uh, with this one. This is a little bit more tepid and uh, measured. So that could be the only uh, downside of Utrecht, but I feel like the rest of the check boxes are so good. Price, opacity, pigmentation, uh, tint, um, and non-toxicity that it's okay if it doesn't feel as lustrous when you do a shade. Um, it's just good to have that in mind, but yeah. Uh, Naples yellow. 
with chromatic black, always lighter first and then brings, oh, nice. This is a beautiful uh, gray. Um, okay, so this makes a very, <laughs> a very um, tarnished gray. It's a gorgeous color, actually. It's a nice way to make gray, uh, but a colorful gray, I would say, maybe for a cast shadow on linen or something like a light fabric. This could be a really great, uh, uh, they don't have, Gambling doesn't have a cadmium free line. They don't have it. So yeah. And, and finally this bismuth and I didn't have time, I don't know, Jen, but I didn't have time to find out if the bismuth, if bismuth is toxic. I don't think so because we drink it uh, in the form of Pepto bismol. And the bis in bismuth, it's the bismol in Pepto-Bismol. Uh, there is a mineral there. There is a metal or a stone. I think it's a metal. I don't know exactly bismuth. Uh, it's a very alien-like material. So I'm thinking that this is not toxic uh, because uh, I couldn't grab it and look at the label. I don't know if there were any warning uh, things, um, but... I'm, I'm trying to find it. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I know that. Um, so this is a color that I feel like this, we could just use uh, a crew and titanium white and we could get something that, you know, <laughs> similar to this. I don't even know what the heck, um, you know, they're trying to fool uh, people. Uh, well, they almost fooled me because I wanted to buy it because it was 33 bu bucks and behind uh, plexiglass with a lock. So I thought, you know, I must have it. So um, now that I'm just exploring this, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't think that it's that spectacular. In conclusion, uh, and I'm glad we kind of like keeping it like 30 minutes. Main themes that came out of this whole experience, we are going, we made the decision to start uh, phasing out uh, any cadmium based paint. Uh, we're not worried about toxicity um, because I feel like you, you need to have a cut on your skin. Uh, you need to, uh, I don't know, it just it needs to be on your hands. You need to eat it, eat with your hands with uh, paint. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but uh, I feel like there are other uh, places where we can get the same uh, toxicity. When uh, we pump gas, we get uh, exposed to uh, heavy metals. When we use beauty products, uh, we get exposed. When we eat certain foods, we get exposed. So we always found that there's a relative uh, balance between uh, toxicity. And uh, we feel like it's unfair to single out one element and say, I'm not gonna paint in oil because it's toxic. When we get an overload of pollution and, and plastic, in our system uh, of things that are around us. It's, you know, I think it's not fair. But um, at the same time, I feel like there's no, um, uh, that doesn't mean like we should maybe take a stand and slowly uh, move towards um, pigments that we know for sure they don't have a warning uh, and they're not cancer causing. So that would be the reason why when we finish this enormous tube of, um, cadmium yellow light, or when we get, uh, I don't know, some sort of like um, gift <laughs> for Christmas, um, we will replace the yellow light and then we will move towards alternatives. Um, I can see this color right here that you track. It's not as yellow, but let's not forget, this is lemon yellow, this is uh, cadmium yellow light. They're, they don't have cadmium free yellow light on you track. So this could be an alternative. We're gonna either switch to this or we're gonna just go to the Hansas, the Hansa yellow. Okay, thanks. Bismuth is not toxic. Um, they have other yellows, uh, by the way, uh, the Williamsburg, but um, that's gonna be when we find a sponsor or something, you know, that they, someone buys this for us, but I don't know, uh, or we need it for whatever reason. Uh, so this is gambling right here. This is um, Williamsburg uh, and this is Utrecht. So Utrecht, gambling, Williamsburg. Uh, Utrecht has good pigments, you know, uh, we're gonna just go for, 
um, this uh, cadmium free line or go for the Hansa yellows. Um, they have three uh, ranges. So maybe slowly we'll get this one and the next one will be the medium. Uh, another thing is that you can great, uh, get great tones with these colors um, that could be applied to botanical elements. And also I love the shades that you get with chromatic black and yellow. You don't need green to make beautiful greens. Uh, in fact, you know, when you put green out of a tube, it's too much. Maybe we should just use yellow instead and bring a little bit of black. I think that's going to be our new way of making greens. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. We're going to stop the recording and then we're just going to open the microphones and have a conversation about it. And then we can just, uh, oh, we have a new um, album uh, of images from Sunday. We're going to share with, uh, with you guys. But thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to stop the recording. And thanks for watching this. We have more tutorials on our website. So please um, check that out.